right, so enough of the ads. We're going to be moving into this next game between which two players are these, actually? Toots and Zero to None. Okay, so Zero... Doesn't Zero to None normally play uh, Zelda? Zelda? Yeah. Not really sure what he's doing, but... Oh, uh, well, apparently he wants to have fun. I mean, I don't have fun with Zelda, so maybe that's what his deal is? He's finally seen the light that K. Rool is the only way to enjoy yourself in this game. I don't believe that's what it actually is. I'm curious what his th exact thought process is. But K. Rool is a very interesting character that can do some really cool things. And even though this might not be the main he's known for, I'm sure he's going to show uh, some really neat stuff for us. But while that's going on, uh, I don't want to neglect Toots and what he's been up to because he has kind of been doing tons of damage here. 120% already. I mean, Wario has some really solid combos, and he's absolutely been doing those. And Wario also has his finishing power can be kind of tricky. Um, all right, yeah, that dash attack, not enough to finish a heavy boy like K. Rool. It seems that he's, you know, trying to, I like the idea of putting him on the ledge and then trying to get a forward tilt or something to close out the stock. And the bar back air, so cool. He actually managed to find that, threading the needle. Really great from uh, Toots. He has a solid lead here. Let's see how much he can do with it, though. Good parry. I don't know if he wanted that footstool, but it made him look cooler. Trying to go on that tech chase read. Up, oh, just eating the <laughs> eating the crown. These two guys are playing. Well, actually, Toots is playing really patiently, and I love that. He knows he has a lead. He knows that K. Rool is forced to approach, and approaching K. Rool can be kind of a nightmare sometimes. The guy does have two projectiles that he can use to keep you out, as well as all of the super armor on his moves. So, all right, yeah, he is not messing around. That forward tilt at the ledge is enough to do it. And now we have three stocks to one, and we're not even talking about the fact that Waft is online. This actually is gonna be it, maybe? Oh, he reads the landing, and oh, okay. Great back air, and he dabs. I think that's why he wanted to play K. Rool. He wanted to get the down, top, the, down uh, the, the crouch spam. And that's going to be it. Yep. Waff to finish the job. Really convincing stuff from Toots. Uh, but given the way that match went, it's important to, remi to remember that Zero to None is mostly known for his Zelda. And after that, I'm pretty sure he's going to be switching to that. And his Zelda is really solid. I believe he used to be a Wi-Fi warrior. And then he started to come to actual tournaments. Still is a Wi-Fi warrior. He still is a Wi-Fi warrior, but he comes to actual tournaments and really, like, he does well. Like, he's a fantastic Oh, player. yeah. He went uh, game three last hit with the Buzz last week. <laughs> really? Yeah. Dang. Ethernet jack in hand. All right. So, yeah, we, we're going to see a different beast this time around. Zelda is kind of, I feel like, you know, people who play Zelda really dedicate themselves to this character. She has such unique and interesting traps. And as somebody who really, this is the character he's known for, he, we've seen him do amazing things with it. So if you haven't seen him before, you're in for a treat. Oh, great job just getting the, uh, the forward air there. You know, one thing about the last game was uh, Wario lasted to a surprisingly high percent. I think he died at like 140, 150 against the K. Rule. But honestly, Zelda might have more kill power than K. Rule. Like, oh man, between her forward air, her back air, her just the phantom shenanigans, all her smash attacks, and the way that she's able to just so consistently do it, uh, like land stuff with those ledge traps. Beautiful parry to forward air. Oh, that's something you always have to respect with Zelda. Her neutral beat comes out so quick. It has intangibility. It's, uh, some Zelda players kind of instinctually just kind of, you know, maybe mash the B button whenever they get hit. But zero to none, he mixes it up really well. He doesn't get too, you know, panicky once he gets hit. He realizes that getting hit is not the end of the world. It's just a matter of finding your way out of that bad situation. All right. 
And speaking of bad situations, he has been putting, ooh, he's been putting Toot in this bad situation over and over again at the ledge. Oh, I love Wario's, uh, when he, I don't know what that's called, when uh, you get hit, but you don't, uh, you know, when you get spiked at really low percents, the little boyo yoing animation. Oh, you know what uh, I'm talking about. I, I want to say it's like a stagger, but like, I know what you mean. Oh, all right, now that we're done speculating about uh, jargon, that's another stock gone, zero to none, looking, yeah, like a completely different beast. This is his element. This Zelda has been doing so much damage, 60% already, and the, <laughs> managing to catch him at the ledge. Yeah, no, that air dodge kind of spelt his doom, but what else are you going to do? You kind of, I guess in that situation, maybe he could have survived the Din's fire and you just eat it. Like, that is at least one of the... I'm not going to say advantages, but... Oh, maybe he thought that he had a bike back. Yeah, that's a possibility. Because if he biked and then jumped, he might have been able to make it back. But I guess bike didn't come back by then. Start the battle. Wario, Wario. Zelda, Wario. All right, in game three. And... Toots has to be reconsidering things. You know, he won that game one, probably felt pretty confident about it. But what happened in that game two, this is the nature, the true nature of the beast. Zero to none has his Zelda, it's ledge traps. He just, Toot didn't seem ready for it. And this time around, maybe, you know, he has to, I think that, ah, uh, it's, I, I can't, there's no straight answer for how to get off the ledge against zero to none. Otherwise, he would not be the player that he is if it was just a gimmick that you could play around so simply. But Toot has to figure something out. Already, the combo game is significantly better this time around. But sort of to go along with that, that neutral beat, he's not quite respecting. At least the aggressive approach seems to be working for two. Uh, last time, Zero to None had tons of space at every point in the match, it felt. And this time around, I love the range he's staying at. But uh, once Zelda starts charging up that Phantom, you have to respect it by just retreating. You can't run at her, and by retreating, now you've given her space, and she can set up more freely what she wants to do. And I was talking about how he needs to uh, adjust his disadvantage a little bit more, and I think that's exactly what Toots has done. These high bikes, though, options it seems that Zero to None is not quite ready for, to, at least to cover so effectively. I stand corrected. You know, <laughs> this is the thing. Once you think you have an answer, <gasps> oh, good angle on that upbeat to make it back to stage. That was almost a really early stock. But in the end, Toot manages to even up the stock count only 22% taken for him. But at the same time, you see that the download on zero, from zero to none is so good. And he was able to get off the ledge pretty easily for a while there, but he has to come up with new tricks at every point if he wants to keep it that way. Zero to none is no old dog, and he can learn other people's tricks. Oh, great spacing on that forward smash from zero to none. He has him in the corner, oh, a little bit too aggressive, not respecting the Phantom. All right, yeah, I will say that the, um, I, I, I do really like the stage counter pick. Those platforms have been helping him out getting off from ledge. But despite the stage being in his favor, despite all of that, he is kind of up against the wall right now. <gasps> Let's not forget about Waft. Waft is just such a vicious comeback mechanic. And at this point, if he manages to take Zero to None's stock pretty quickly, like, you know, within 30 to 40%, or at least if, like, no, he's only at 60 by the time Zero to None comes down with his fresh on his last stock, Waft is a, it's a set winning threat. I think the Phantom Hit actually kind of saved him right there. And, but we're sort of getting to the point where even if he does manage to take the stock now, it might still be out of reach. Waft, like, accounted for. Oh, we 
did kind of really good dash back there, but uh, he wasn't able to really punish. Zelda is just too fast sometimes and hitting him from across the map. There's so many things you have to be mindful of and Zero to None just taking his time. Eventually the Jaden's Fire connects and he's going to be moving on in bracket, winning the set 2-1. So you know something uh, I realized just now? Yes. Uh, I was looking at the patch notes because apparently the patch is out now. Wait, they're, they're, they balance patch? Uh, yeah. It's, so there was balance patch? Not too much. Uh, really, they but they did the biggest patch, the biggest uh, thing ever, and that made it that they got rid of the hold buffer air dodge roll thing from when you land. So like, isn't that one of the things? Like, John, was that the thing that John? No, the that, was really uh, yeah, about? it was, it was. That was that thing. So they actually got rid of that. They actually got rid of wow. it. Wow, I that That's was OD. such. <laughs> That's pretty cool. I don't. It wasn't a single person out there. Wait. Hey, Ponderbot, thank you. But yeah, like, oh my God, that's such a big deal. 